These people are breaking corona rules and they're trying to attack me. They're trying to attack me. They're trying to attack me. Ah, get out of it, man. You're in a space. Stop attacking. Get out of here. You get out of here. Leave her alone. What are you talking about? You are! Get out of her face! You get out of my Get out of her face! Welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about the intersectional car crash that's happened in Victoria in relation to COVID-19 and Daniel Andrews. Stick around, the report from Tiger Mountain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the intersectional car crash zone that we are in, in Victoria. Um, yes, intersectional politics has played a big part of the disaster that we've been seeing in Victoria. And I wanted to discuss that. Um, uh, commentators, brave commentators like uh, Alan Jones, Peter Credlin, uh, and Andrew Bolt have raised this on Sky News. Um, that there have been many uh, examples of Daniel Andrews um, deliberately inserting uh, intersectional politics, uh, identity politics, into this whole situation. Uh, it happened at the beginning with the, um, the quarantine um, uh, situation. What happened was is, uh, he was offered um, the Australian Defence Force. Obviously, um, the Australian Defence Force is mainly made up of European Australians. Obviously, there's some multiculturalism going on there, but basically, it's uh, it's still basically an Australian force. Uh, he was offered that, and uh, he, he refused that. God knows why. I mean, I'm suspicious that it was some kind of deliberate sabotage was going on. He decided to use a private security firms, and there were two types of, uh, of firms that he wanted to employ. One was an Aboriginal firm. Now, um, uh, obviously, that's done that, that particular firm no favours because it's uh, partly responsible for the, the terrible calamity um, that's happened um, by the failure at the quarantine at the security hotels. Another one was a kind of, you know, like a a kind of uh, Muslim, um, Arab kind of situation security firm. Obviously, a lot of security firms locally in, in Melbourne have been taken over by these communities. God knows why. That sounds like another bad idea. And um, again, because due to their loyalty to this country, and um, you know they were also put in charge of a lot of the security at these quarantine hotels. And again, it was turned into a disaster. And um, you know, you're seeing how this this desire to appear woke, I mean, there's that saying in business, which is go woke, go broke. But, you know, here we've got a situation of, you know, go woke and, you know, I mean, and die or something like that. I mean, you know, I mean, there's been 800 people who've died of COVID-19, apparently in, in Victoria, mainly people in old people's homes. Now, we don't know the exact figures. Um, they're obviously inflated because I think anybody dying in a nursing home um, in these past six months has been put down as COVID. I think something dodgy is going on there. Again, that needs to be checked out. But, um, you know, obviously the situation, the reason we have had a spike, though, and we have had this second really draconian lockdown, which is heading into its fourth or fifth month at the moment, um, is due to the disaster at the hotel quarantines. And what was absolutely shocking is that, again, uh, there was a situation only about two or three weeks ago uh, where Daniel Andrews was once again put in charge, you know, had a situation in relation to hotel quarantine where he had a private security company. Again, he didn't use the Australian Defence Forces. He does not want to use the Australian Defence Forces because he considers, I think, Victoria to be separate to Australia. I think in league with China now, in league to a Chinese agenda. It's like, it's like Daniel Andrews has declared a kind of secession and he's separated Victoria from the rest of Australia. It's a terribly terrible situation. And he's been using this intersectional politics as a wedge. I mean, it's absolutely shocking what's going on. And another thing that's been going on is the way these immigrant communities, um, you know, you've noticed this, these are the communities that are not listening to health advice. Every, you know, European and particularly Anglo-Saxon, uh, I live in a particularly Anglo-Saxon area. Everyone in my area is wearing a mask. Everyone in my area is obeying every single rule. Whenever there's a curfew, they stay in. Whenever there's a five kilometer radius, no one leaves it. Everyone is completely obeying, but they are the people that are being uh, punished because there's some ethnic community that's having some, I don't know, some kind of Muslim celebration and they don't give a shit about social distancing or they're having some, I don't know, God knows, there's bound to be a Chinese fifth column operating in the middle of this, again, because of Daniel Andrews' strange allegiance with China and he's 
already talking about building the local trains using um, Chinese companies. What the hell is wrong with using Australian companies? I mean, you know, why don't we get the business? We're in a huge financial crisis created by the China virus. Why should they be getting business out of all this? So you see here the full disaster of intersectional politics, which uh, in, is responsible for the hotel quarantine disaster. Um, I believe it's responsible for the fact that the disease is still lingering in certain uh, like corners of Victorian communities because basically the immigrant communities are not listening to health advice. They know exactly what's going on, but they don't give a shit. They have no loyalty to our countries. And that's exactly why we on the new right have been warning about these communities. They have no loyalty to us, whether they be Chinese, whether they be uh, Arab or from the Muslim world. And it's a complete disaster what's going on. And I wanted to discuss that. I wanted you all to think about intersectional politics and Victoria. And that is why the rest of Australia is basically going about life as normal. And yet we are still in this draconian um, stage four lockdown, which I believe is going to be extended now to November, which is absolutely ridiculous. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. And uh, thank you for listening.